This is the terrible SpongeBob Movie 3. Why did they make a third one? Coming fresh off the news of Steven Hillenburg's passing, Nickelodeon went ahead and created their backup plan of staying relevant by going all in on SpongeBob. It's not the character who died, just the soul of the franchise instead. Oh, there's gonna be more of these. God help us all. So the movie begins with us slowly entering the realm of Bikini Bottom, now with a new slick of paint to really get those modern kids paying attention. 2D is for boomers, showing us the normal daily lives of our favorite characters. Well, the main characters, and for the first nine minutes, it's basically just all those basic traits put back to back. Good morning, Patrick! Good morning, SpongeBob! Seen it. <laughs> Great. Another evil plan. Seen but it. <laughs> Seen it. <laughs> what the f is this? Uh. Seen it? I don't know when the inciting incident was, but we really all grew up to be a Squidward, huh? Another day, another migraine. Later. Another day. Another migraine. Anyway, some nice details in this sequence are the use of the Goofy Goober Party Boat, a rare appearance for the main show that started from the first movie, as well as Patrick being on some kind of register, if this is a regular thing. Anyway, the plot really begins when Sandy comes in with her new invention, Aquafina. My name is Otto. How may I serve you? And pitches it to Mr. Krabs to revolutionize his business. You have 60 seconds. Okay, so get this, right? We take the Super Mario franchise, right? Iconically beloved, and then we just cram Chris Pratt inside of it, you know? Everybody will love it. There's no controversies to be had there. And we'll have it be made by the same guys who made the Minions. Ah, Jesus, I hate these things. So you don't like the idea, or? By the way, this is meant to be a, like SpongeBob's tie. It's not anything else. Sandy's Aquafina invention, Otto, promises to automate Mr. Krabs' work so he'll never have to do anything again. I'll take it and nurture it and I will love Otto like he was me own son. Thank you, Daddy. Though she's quickly binned after trying to fire Mr. Krabs himself, bringing them over to Plankton and his robot wife who are scheming as usual, pinpointing that SpongeBob is the source of all their problems and having opportunity land in their laps. Also, they specifically mention that Plankton has attempted to grab the formula 3,087 times and SpongeBob has worked here for eight years. So doing the maths on that, yeah, it adds up. Cool. So the next scene is Spongebob at night cleaning up the kitchen, doing so in his spongy ways. Room for some creative animations, but it's still not that original. Exploding water like in the intro, saying goodbye to each item, seen that before. There's really only two new things I can spot. Licking the screen, I like that, and... <sighs> is this the best they could come up with? It's like the franchise's biggest enemy is the fact that it itself has become so big. It's done everything already. It's like the writers are running out of room to do more. That explains the spin-offs. Anyway, Plankton sneaks in with his heist. Has a nice classic moment of reaching for that formula, uses the wet floor sign, that's some nice consistency, and loses. Bring in the new character. Yo, what's up, sire? Not him, him. It is, it's a wrinkle. I don't like an old avocado that's been left and forgotten in the fridge! Another King Neptune? No, this is King Poseidon. What's the difference? Well, I guess somewhere in the background, the entire SpongeBob Foundation has transitioned to another line of mythology, as Neptune comes from Roman mythology and Poseidon is Greek, though they're essentially the same in Domain and Trident. What an odd change. And they also have appearance insecurities. He needs a snail for his skincare routine. And that's the plot. Time to cue that one episode we've already seen before. Come on, Miss Tufsy, there's plenty more fun to be had. All leading us to the most soulless corporate shilling moment, 
the tie-in to Camp Coral. See, now, the entire backstory has the SpongeBob universe being entirely rewritten. None of the characters met in the present as adults shown in early TV episodes. Now, SpongeBob is given a full childhood experience where he met everybody. And the idea of doing a sequel to SpongeBob is precisely against the wishes of creator Steven Hillenburg. He was literally the imposing factor that stopped Nickelodeon from doing so earlier. But he's dead now! So here we are. How did they meet? They just did on a rock one day. And that's the scene over. <sighs> Worth it. Worth it. It. What follows next is a really drawn out three minutes of SpongeBob and Patrick discussing what to do. Get Gary was the conclusion there. But I do like that they brought back the more physical humor of the sponge's tear physics from the first movie. The rest is pretty standard though. And right on cue, Plankton sends the boys off in an automated boat. The adventure begins with them immediately arguing over nothing. Stop the car! Yeah, stop the car! <sighs> well, at least they're speed running the cliches. At the Krusty Krab, everyone protests with SpongeBob not working. <laughs> We get the out of here! And now, SpongeBob is in the desert, on the surface. It's the live action portion of the movie. For some reason. I am a simple tumbleweed. Call me Sage. Oh, it's to shoehorn in celebrities. Classy. Where are my legs? See, in the first movie, I kind of felt like it works with David Hasselhoff. He's coming off of a Baywatch reference, so he's in tune with the ocean. But decapitating Keanu Reeves to stuff him in a plant just seems a little forced. It then just spirals out more as the two enter a saloon with... Most don't. Even when I'm on, I'm off, y'all. Huh? Bring the prisoners to my office! What? Only a couple more needed and we've reunited the Spy Kids cast. And this whole B-plot is about saving the souls of these zombie ghosts, accidentally killing their leader with the sunlight, and then that's what frees them. Thank you, SpongeBob. We're finally free. Huh? I agree, SpongeBob. <laughs> then they're chased by the tornado version of El Diablo Daddy Trejo and then they wake up. Oh, except Keanu is real, and he gives them a window to see Gary live, to tell them to... I don't actually think this really motivates anything, other than to voice how outdated these writers seem to be. It's not a video chat app like Skype or FaceTime or anything. Skype? It's 2020 when this came out. Anyway, Mr. Krabs has now given up without his boy Spongebob. So depressed that winning doesn't even feel like a victory to Plankton. You're giving up? Leave me alone, you asshole. I'm not going anywhere. Hey, it's time for the casino montage in the lost city of Sin City, Atlantis City. Playing alongside Living La Vida Loca. <laughs> Because in more outdated fashion, we're going back to 2004 and the Shrek 2 vibes. Oh, but this is a modern twist. <laughs> it cuts sometimes. Wow. Is this going to be a new thing in movies to get that TikTok vibe somehow? I feel like I could see it. Anyway, it's the two going stir-crazy gambling, keeping up with the adult activity in kids' cartoons and especially Spongebob movies for some reason. Though it's still pretty basic in execution, as is the hangover scene afterwards. With Sage complaining at such harsh angles, I'm pretty sure his footage has been physically turned to match the eyeline. But then, they're at their destination. And after a couple of pretty boring jokes... Oh sure, let me check. Two rubes to see Poseidon... No. Hey dude, we're the blue finger. Oh. Course. We end up on stage before his majesty Poseidon. Get comfy, because we're basically going to stay here for the final 40 minutes of the film. But this first scene here doesn't really do much. One child's game, a run to Poseidon, a pull and tug sequence, and that's it. So, uh, because there's still the other half of the cast back at Bikini Bottom to deal with. And I've got another pitch for you. Movie video games! We're now uploading these every Friday on Daz Reviews 2 and streaming them earlier on our Twitch. We are now streaming every other day this kind of content, so come on over or subscribe if you haven't already. Please check. You know, these things happen. Finally, Sandy Cheeks makes her second ever appearance, noticing SpongeBob is missing and rounding up the others to chase after them. 
I hate to admit it, but things just aren't the same without him. Because SpongeBob and Patrick are going to be getting a public execution. Excuse me, uh, can I tag along? <laughs> what the f*** are you doing here? Ah, oh, yes, and Plankton comes along as well. Why? And we'll hear about it in the car. Mr. Squidward! We won't, really. As for that car, it's the OG one from the first movie, but now with a subway style extension. I like it, not gonna lie. This next prison scene, I don't. It's just another stupid breakup scene. Oh, but they flash back twice to reveal who's the real issue. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, at least one joke was executed well. I'm out of here. And now that was all the time we needed for everyone to come together. Just completely skim over anything with a secondary cast. I'm sure they'll get some worthy screen time later. It's time for the execution show, in which Sandy completely derails it. But sire, a strong defense makes for a better show. Isn't that right, audience? Oh, okay. I really wanted to see an execution though. I'll allow so what is this giant defense then? Is it the kind we've seen in pretty much every kid's cartoon that covers this plot trope? You know, the one that's all about how the defendant is really a good person? How they've always, always been, been there, there for, for them? Even going all the way back to summer camp. No, no, in they're fact, just going to tie back into Camp Coral No, 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 I don't want to be him! No, no, no! Yep, it's all just one big retconned origin story. Now they met as kids, not as a lasso explosion monster. <laughs> and the scene has them punching each other and laughing. That's it. So, please, don't hurt him. Oh, but the show's not over yet. Patrick's gonna monologue now. Well, in this sea star's opinion, those laws should be broken. Oh, wow, this starfish is really getting dramatic. He... I was just a lonely bump on a log when I first met him. Oh, f f what, another spin-off plug? Are you kidding? What? No, wait, uh. <laughs> So, why did these two meet in this land of broken promises? SpongeBob offered jellyfish to him because he was crying once. Revolutionary. Man. Things haven't changed that much today, Your Honor. You're telling me. Yes, because if you haven't picked up already, we're going to be going through five retconned Camp Coral backstories, which really don't need to be crammed into this movie. We get where the plot goes from here anyway. Alas. I don't like SpongeBob. Whoa, 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 whoa! Anyway. I too met this nabob in oh, End my suffering. I remember it like it was yesterday. In this reality, there's a whole talent show arc where Squidward lost and do we care? Is this needed? Can we skip these? Mr. Krabs also has a story to tell. But I won't. Oh good! Might even speak about how he inspired me when I was just oh, a come on. vendor with But I won't. Hmm. Heck, I'd probably mention how he encouraged me to start up my own restaurant. You should open up your own restaurant. The real secret formula is sitting right here. Ahem, <sighs> maestro? What are you, man? A formula is something like a recipe. A what recipe is this? Is what, like why is plan. this a musical, man? <laughs> worked in the first film is because they had like five different songs now that we're men all the other ones i have forgotten them but they're there well this really is just like the substance of one episode extended into a film uh. anyway that whole sequence of corporate origin stories was about 15 minutes long awful but it was all a ploy to steal Gary and go on the run. Time for our creative fight scene. What's that SpongeBob slapstick humor gonna do this time? Apparently, fighting Power Ranger style in a suit of armor. Not bad. Classic. Nice you know what joke I really like? <laughs> do you think we should have stayed in there with Squidward? Where is everybody? What? When did that? Oh, way to ruin it, guys. 
And with Squidward weak by himself, he burns and fools out the building. Rest in peace him and his FNAF scream. God, this film sure gets distracted a lot. Yo, what's up? Hey! I have a gambling problem. Yeah. Good joke! Yeah! I love it! More! Ah! It's the final escape! Failed! Immediately. Leaving so soon, kids? Instead, it's the final confrontation. King Poseidon decrees they can all go free as long as they return the snail. But of course, that's not a happy ending at all. At least the death stakes are gone. SpongeBob. Sage? Is that you? Hello. Uh, hello? This is a 2020 movie, so it, I guess if, if Keanu can just zoom call in, I, I assume that means I should be able to too, right? Seriously, it's impressive how bad they were able to make this whole thing just look. So what's the final, final answer? Courage. Courage to say no and promptly get executed. In actuality, it's a wholesome message about friends and how Poseidon doesn't have any. I have buddies, I have besties, I have home slices. Uh, yeah. And that doesn't put him on a murdering rampage, it makes him sad. I don't have any friends! Readying for SpongeBob to be his only friend. But friends don't kidnap friends' pet snails. Oh, that's what I'm doing wrong. And so, Poseidon gives up his desires to look absolutely perfect, everyone is happier, the snails are freed, and life returns to normal. Just Bikini Bottom adopted all the snails. And there's no reference to Spongebob actually keeping his promise of being a friend to Poseidon. Wholesome! And all to the beat of a cover of Take On Me. Did... Did they turn Spongebob into a snail at the end? They really did desecrate the original vision, huh? I think that's enough of that. Yeah. It 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 was a tie. It was a tie that was it was supposed to be like a SpongeBob rep. It was a it was You know what the worst part of all this is? The animation is actually pretty stellar. It looks nice and appealing. It's a great visual adaptation. And I love the homages to stop motion animation in some of the minor details where it's animated on twos. But this film is just dreadful. The jokes are more slapstick a la the grand original movie and it has the general vibe of Spongebob, but just soulless in execution. Mr. Krabs' footsteps just don't do it for me anymore. Mm. Something's off. Thank you. Sorry. But as usual, some jokes shine through. Spongebob muttering about curtain rail logistics. Once the ride goes, you're probably better off getting a whole new set of curtains. And Patrick's seven mistake seems like a classic quote to me. Just put it on L. Patrick, that's not an L, that's a seven. Seven starts with an L. But I don't like the little addition at the end. Oh, it's weird. Dunno, just feels like too much. But overall, it's one big marketing ploy to force feed the idea of that Camp Coral spin-off. And it's not that a spin-off can't be done tastefully, I'm happy to hear that The Patrick Show has added some new spice to the franchise, without having to wreck on ideas or spit on Hillenberg's wishes. But this is still the embodiment of basic. The celebrity additions crass, the originality lacking, so much repeated or just naff and poorly executed across the board. This movie isn't a classic. It's just another result of the mass-producing corporate machine. But you don't need me to tell you that. Can't wait for the next one. Wait, what? They're actually making another one? And three more movies based on spin-offs? Well, we'll get to that when we get to that then. This movie didn't even have the sponge on the run that much. I counted three and a half minutes, max. Whatever. If you like this, do subscribe and check out all our other outlets. For now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. <sighs> At least it's comforting to know that the original movie is seen as the canonical, real ending to all things in the Spongebob timeline. That's the real ending. That's the good film. Yeah. <laughs>